nice to be back. I'm sorry we went with you last week, but I gather it went okay. Very good. Yeah. Very good. good. That, that's excellent. Um, and welcome to everyone who's joining us for the first time. Um, welcome to our guest of honour, Dean. Uh, anyway, welcome to our all age harvest service. Today we give thanks to God for all that He's given us out of God's wonderful creation. We're going to sing a song, a hymn of thanks. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Uh, if you would like to stand, I think that's permitted to sing, please do so. If you would prefer to remain seated, that's fine as well. Eternity and time. Be with us in this time. Saviour of the world, healer of the nations, be with us in this place. Breath of all that lives, of people near and far, stir within our lives. Maker, Spirit, Son, God of here and now. In presence in our worship, that we may find new ways to be present in your world. Please be seated. Now, our time to recall before God those things for which we ask His forgiveness. Although we are given the wonderful gift of creation, we often fail to value it and to care for it as we should. So let us ask God's forgiveness for the ways in which we misuse and neglect what God has given us. As we prepare to celebrate, let us call to mind our sins and the sins of our society and the misuse of God's creation. We say sorry for the wrong we have done against God, the whole world, and our neighbour. God has blessed us, but still God's children go hungry. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God has blessed us, but still the poor cry out for justice. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. God has blessed us, but still we see inequality and oppression in the earth. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins, and assure you of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain, as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain. Vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten. The hopper, the destroyer and the cutter. My great army which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks very much, Lord. We now sing our next hymn, Who Put the Colours in the Road? Rain. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat or what will we drink? For what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given you as well. This is the word of the Lord. Now I wonder, um, I wonder,
wonder how many of you might remember a book about a very hungry caterpillar. I don't know how fast you can cast your minds back, but you know, the kids, the grandchildren will probably remember this character. Um, the book has holes in it, appropriately, and it told the story of a very hungry caterpillar who ate everything, starting with pears and apples and oranges, then chocolate cake, lollipops and sausages, until finally he ate a green leaf and went to sleep and turned into a beautiful butterfly. Um, well, okay, I want to talk about another hungry creature today, but not one that turns into a butterfly. Um, uh, in the reading in, that Laurie gave us, Joel talked about, uh, God talked about locusts. We heard about them in our first reading. Now, you may not have seen one recently. Fortunately, we don't get many in Sunday Hall. The most noticeable bad thing about them is their mouth. They eat absolutely everything. And the problem is that if you don't get one, you get hundreds and thousands of them. The prophet Joel told us about locusts in Bible times. And even today, they can eat a whole harvest in one raid. A farmer can have his crop of wheat ready to be gathered, and these things come along. And that can be everything gone. Uh, now, last week, uh, we went with because we were actually uh, spending a little time just over the border in Paris, um, partly to visit our son and his family. Um, I, I, I may have mentioned Mark, our son, he's got a vineyard, he runs a vineyard. And we had a little look round, and they're impressed it is. Uh, and I can also tell you that the rain in Wales is very similar to the rain in England, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so in this country, there are many things out to get the crops. Fortunately, though, we don't get locusts. Um, so we're lucky here that locusts don't eat the harvest, but we do need to remember that in many places in the world, people do starve when the harvest fails. Um, we've got a picture of some grapes as well. Stick that up like yeah, there we are. Um, in this country, many people do struggle to feed their families too. And so our collection of produce today is going to help you handle this food bank so that those who don't have enough will at least have something. But although we don't have locusts, we do have things in our lives that eat away at us and spoil the pleasure and the harvest that God wants for us. Imagine this, a beautiful morning. The sky is blue, the sun is shining, and we're in good health. You know, not too many aches and pains. Then we look at the news. Well, the M25 is blocked again. There's a petrol shortage. Sounds like Christmas is being cancelled, Covid's always there. Suddenly things aren't quite so good. Is this a locust that's been at work? There are many ways that locusts can be at work, and we may all have our own sworn someday. Now in our Gospel reading, Jesus isn't talking about locusts, but he's talking about things that worry us. Yet, if we look a little more closely at this passage, we discover that it's addressed to people who have known fear and famine. Twice we read those words, do not be afraid. God promises to restore the years the locusts have eaten. And Joel chapter 2 reveals a loving God who takes pity on the people who have turned away from him. A God who redeems and blesses his people, a God who provides. But as we go about our daily lives as God's people, how good are we at recognising and trusting in God's provisions for us? That's the question that Jesus asks his followers in our reading from Matthew 6. Four times in ten verses, Jesus tells his followers, do not worry do not worry about your life. Why do you worry about your clothes? 
So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Do not worry about tomorrow. Jesus warns that worry can become destructive. Can any of you find worry as a single hour to your life, he asks. If we're honest, many of us will find Jesus' words challenging. We can find plenty to worry about in our world today. Personal worries about our health, our finances, our families. Wider concerns about the economy, environmental degradation, climate change. Concerned about today and anxious about tomorrow. We risk worry. Trust in God's provision. But how do we do that? The answer is in Matthew 6. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. What does this look like in our lives as followers of Jesus? Firstly, it's reflected in our prayers. We pray for God's kingdom to come here on earth as in heaven. For example, Paul, in his uh, first letter to Timothy, urges that petitions, prayers, intercessions and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for all in authority, that we may be peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. So do we regularly pray for our government, our MP, our local councillors? Secondly, we do it through our actions, actively looking for the God moments in each day, recognising where God is at work in us and with those we meet, in conversations with friends and strangers, focusing with thankfulness on the good things we enjoy, <coughs> reflecting God's love in the way we treat other people and in our care for God's creation, being kingdom builders through our relationships and our lifestyle choices. As we recognise God's love and provision for us, we respond in praise and worship. In the words of the prophet Joel from our reading this morning, do not be afraid, be glad and rejoice. Surely the Lord has done great things. Be glad, rejoice in the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. So now, let us stand, if you're comfortable to do so, to declare our faith in God the Creator. As we say together, we believe and trust in God the Father, who made the world. We believe and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world. We believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. Amen. The harvest of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. So, in the best way we can, let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. <laughs> So now we sing our next 
him think of the world. Um, do, we, do we know this? No. Does anybody know it? <laughs> 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 it's it's been a long time ago. Long time ago. Anyway, right, let's give it a go. Okay, the way you go, Bruce.
And Lord, we pray today for those who are ill, whether in body, mind or spirit. We remember those who are bereaved, that in the midst of their loss, pain and suffering, that they would know the depths of your love for them. And amongst those who are sick, we have been asked to pray for Carol and Stuart, Paul Binfield, Irene Tunnicke, Julie, Geoffrey Pierce, Pat Bass, Jane, Helen, Nigel, Angeline, Eileen Gilbert, Mary, Keith Potter, Ethan, Kerry, David, Michael Adams, and Don Cullen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light that no darkness can quench. We remember before God those who have died and hold a candle to symbolise the light of Christ, which eternally shines and brings hope. And amongst the departed, we remember Pat Brother, John Sheldon, and Samuel Ogier. You turn our darkness into light. In your light shall we see light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, as we go out into your world today, let us remember your goodness. Make us grateful also for all we have received from the labour of others who have sown the seeds of faith, hope, and love in our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of our Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Last week, and those 
flowers. I don't like them all. But they're lovely. They are just lovely. <laughs> Anybody know who? So I don't think we can ask Sue to do it yet again. So if you'd like to sign up, and also please sign up for the coffee with yourself. Um, Paul and Jen have very kindly said they're going to be doing the silver, so I don't have to nag about the silver. And then the really, really important thing, apart from everything else, and it's been a lovely service, thank you, Bruce, is that it's a celebration a month and a bit late for Jean's 100th birthday. Is it the 9th of September? 8th of September. So we have a, a cake that we would like to share with you, uh, which Keith will bring in and show to Jean and then show to Picosa. Picosa. So we hope very much that you will stop for a slice of cake and a fellowship and a glass of wine, or coffee, or scotch. So, I think also we have a small gift for Jean. Thank you, Sue. Oh, the colours, the colours match up.
Anne-Marie. 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 Anne-